Hello, today we are going to explore using Zoom for a class. In this case, I'm going to show you what I've done to set up Zoom classes for about 10 students at a time. I find if you start including more than 10 students to a class, it starts to get a little bit chaotic and it gets hard to keep track of everybody. So I've divided up my orchestras into sections and then within those sections, I've divided them up into smaller groups. You can also try having your section leaders get together as one Zoom class or having small chamber groups get together as one Zoom class. So the first thing you'll need to do is set up your Zoom account. It's very easy to do. You can do it using Google, using um, a number of other platforms or just your email address. So once you've set up your account, you can download the Zoom app onto your laptop or onto any other device. Once you've done that, this is what the Zoom app looks like on a Mac uh, laptop. And you can just go ahead and hit schedule over here. You can label your meeting. So I'm going to label this one orchestra class group one. You can make it more specific, maybe grade six. Pick the date. I would pick one at least a week out just to give your students enough time to plan. So I'm going to plan this one for next Monday. And I'm going to start the class at 12 o'clock p.m. And I'm going to go into 1230. I found 30 minute meetings are about the limit for student attention and for the most effective class. Actually, you'll see right here, it says your Zoom basic plan has a 40 minute time limit on meetings with three or more participants. You can upgrade and I do believe that right now Zoom has waived their fee. So you can go above a 40 minute time limit for now. However, I have not found this necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and click 12.30 p.m. as the ending time for the meeting. If you're planning on having this meeting every week, you can hit recurring meeting here. Um, I'm gonna uncheck that for now. Meeting ID, you can just generate it automatically. That is fine. Require meeting password. This means that your students or whomever is joining the call will have to enter this code in order to join the class. I just leave that um, standing as it is. You'll want to turn the host video to on so that the students can see you, especially if you're demonstrating doing a scale or playing a piece or demonstrating some kind of technique. You'll want this video on. Participants, this is your students or whoever else is joining the call. On or off, I clicked on for my classes. Audio, I selected telephone and computer audio. This means that students will be able to join via telephone by calling a number and entering the meeting password or through their computer. I just like to have both here um, to further the options for students to join the call. And then here for calendar, you'll just select what kind of calendar you use and this meeting will appear in your calendar. For advanced options, we click over here and you have a couple of things. Enable waiting room. This is basically a area in which participants will be held until you accept them into the room. I have, I use this in one class, but I found it very distracting to have to admit students into the room during the class. Um, so I'm not going to click on this. And I found as long as you have your meeting password, you don't really have to worry about having strangers enter your meeting. Enable to join before host. This means that students will be able to join the call before you get there. 
I do not click that option. I like to be there first and then the students will be able to join after I have. That just means you'll have to be on time or a little bit early um, for your Zoom meeting. Mute participants on entry. I have that one checked off. Uh, that's really helpful for me um, for not getting a lot of extra feedback, um, not educational feedback, but sound feedback from all the different devices that join. So I automatically hit mute and then automatically record meeting on the local computer. That means that you, if you click this, after the call is over, your computer will have stored a recording of the whole meeting. You'll have to see what your organization or district policy is on recording students. Um, I know some teachers have selected this option as a way to protect themselves against any unfortunate allegations about Zoom calls. So you can hit this here. Um, for now, I'm going to uncheck this box and then you can go ahead and click schedule. This takes you to um, a way to access your calendar to schedule your Zoom meeting. I'm gonna skip that for now. And then if you wanna see your meetings, you go over here on the top where it says meetings. Click on that and you'll see it says orchestra class, sixth grade, section one. Awesome. You can see the time it's scheduled for, the meeting ID. Show meeting invitation. This is something you can either select and then copy to send out to your students or you can click copy invitation and it'll copy it for you. You can then email this invitation to your students or post it on Google Classroom, however you'd like to share it. And it just shows your name, the topic of the meeting, the time and date, and then a link they can click on to join the meeting. Um, down here, you just have the meeting ID and password. This would be important for any student who is joining by calling a phone number, which they would find down here, um, and then entering the meeting ID and password to join via um, phone. I have used Zoom uh, for an orchestra, rather a sectional rehearsal yesterday, and what I found really, really essential was that I was using headphones. I used Bluetooth headphones just so that the wire wouldn't get caught. Um, you can use whatever kind of headphones you have on hand. If you have AirPods or some other kind of Bluetooth headphones, that will probably be the most useful for you. Uh, that way you don't get a lot of strange audio feedback as the audio is coming from the students to you and then sending right back to them. Um, how I structured my class was I had everybody muted except for me and then we all played together. So I took a section of, we're working on Calypso C right now and I just said, okay, we're starting at measure 25. I counted off one, two, three, four, and then all of us played together at the same time. Since everybody was muted except for me, they could only hear my audio. This worked out really, really great. And after I did that a couple of times, I selected um, some one or two students to lead, just one student at a time. But I would say, okay, um, Emma, looks like you've really got it down. I'm gonna unmute you and please count off to four so we know when to come in and play Calypso C from measure 25 to 33. So she would get a chance to lead and that was very engaging for the students. Additionally, you can use Zoom to help your students tune their instruments. This is really, really, really helpful as a lot of our students' instruments are really out of tune as you can imagine. 
So I would have one student at a time play each string and I would guide them on how to tune their instrument just one string at a time. This was really helpful and actually was a great way for a lot of students to learn how to tune their instruments for the first time. I also recommended that these students either download a free tuning app to assist them throughout the week or to find a tuning app on their computer or any other device um, just to help them out and help them monitor the intonation of their instrument. You can set up tuning in many different ways. Um, you can schedule meetings with students if they feel like they're really out of tune. You can say Tuesday from 12 to 1 o'clock. I'm going to open a Zoom meeting and if you feel like your instrument is really out of tune, just join the call and I'll help you tune your instrument. So there are many different capabilities for Zoom. Um, that's just a really basic introduction on how you can set up your meetings. Just to give you a heads up, there are a lot of other features you can use during your meeting, such as sharing your screen, joining other meetings, and some different features you can use during your meetings. So I'm gonna click start on this meeting, even though it's not scheduled until um, next Monday at 12 o'clock. And then you can see me. So here you can click join with computer audio and or test speaker and microphone. So with join with computer audio, click right there. I'm using an external microphone as you can see here. So if I wanted to test that sound, I would go down here and you can select select a microphone. This is the built-in microphone. This is the microphone external one that I am using. And then you can select a speaker. So where is the sound coming out of? And then here you can test your speaker and microphone, check the levels, make sure that you are loud enough so your students can hear you. And then you can leave computer audio. Here, audio settings. You can take a look at all these different things here, share screen, test speaker. Um, I know some of my students got really silly and used virtual backgrounds like the, like San Francisco, different things, so silly. Um, recording, there are lots of options for saving your recording here. I'm going through these pretty quickly. Um, I can make a separate video if you want to explore these options a little bit further. You can look at your profile, statistics, accessibility. What's great about this? Closed captioning. It automatically will generate captions for you. Subtitles will look like this. You can make the font bigger or smaller, which is awesome. Here, um, chat settings. During your Zoom call, people can chat as the group. That's really helpful when everybody is muted. Um, it's a little difficult if everyone's holding their instruments, but kids are so good at computers and phones and technology, they can easily send you um, a quick chat with a question or a comment. Um, this is just some, these are some options on how you can configure your own chat. For example, if you wanted to keep all unread messages at the top, you can do that. You can um, have a little notification for your chats. You can move around messages, which is great. I like to make sure the push notifications, meaning a little pop-up will come up um, to show me I've gotten a message, is here. And that's really all you'll need to get started. Um, one thing to know about the chat, you as the teacher can chat with someone privately, meaning only that person receives the message, or uh, you can send a message to the whole class at once. And that will be done, oops, down here for chat. So you can send to everyone, or when there are more participants in the meeting, there'll be an option to click here and send um, a message to just one person. 
You can also send files here. So you can send, let's say you want to send them some new sheet music or an exercise or a scale, you can send the file right here. So that's a really great option for you. Um, participant can chat with. That means you can control who your students are chatting with. Everybody publicly and privately, that means they can chat with either you or the whole class or uh, just one other student or just everyone publicly, meaning they can't directly message each other through chat. Host only, meaning the students can only chat with you, the host, or no one. That one's self-explanatory. All right, so there's the Zoom chat. Um, if you want to pause the recording, you can pause or you can stop recording. This call is being recorded right now. And then you have this kind of cute little reactions thing, thumbs up or an applause for each other. All right, that is a basic um, tutorial, a basic tour of Zoom and a couple of ideas on how you can use Zoom for your own classes. I hope this was helpful and please let me know if you have any questions. All right, good luck.